waiting for Derek to show up so we can split our rooms, but actually this is a really nice villa. Like, this is way better than staying at a hostel, which we initially had wanted to do, um, or a co-living space. Like, having your own villa, which is like a three bedroom, four bathrooms actually, there's one outside. It's really nice, so I am so happy with it. It's gorgeous. I think if you were trying to stay somewhere here in like San Francisco or like somewhere else, it would be so expensive. Only in Bali can you do this. It is so nice. This is our gorgeous green pool. We have an outside room here, I believe. This is the entire unit. Oh my goodness. Right area, it's probably where I'm gonna do some of my work. The pool, got the little cute cactus and the palms. downstairs as well so clean good shower head there's tiff in our living room she's sleep deprived <laughs> this is so cute i'm gonna go up too wow we vlog okay so this is the top floor oh nice oh actually this is really nice oh, it's wow. just more of like it's really nice yeah it's just a luggage i don't want to carry my luggage up here but Derek, I mean, you or Derek can take this one. No, I do not. Ooh, oh my God, this is actually really nice. It's like a full, your full on little like suite. Oh, that's so cute. I mean, Derek can have it because he has diarrhea. Just kidding. <laughs> and then the view. Yeah, I'm ruthless today. Entrance, showing you what it looks like in a co-working spot. We have the bar and the cafe here. There's like a small, cute little pool that people can work out of if they want. This is like the area where you can work outside and take calls. And then inside, oh my god, it's so cute. There's a dog. <laughs> Hi, puppy. Okay, right, here's an inside dog. person who would hire me for a contract role so we'll see how that goes but a lot of it has been like resting the past couple of days I've been just like sleeping a lot and then it's been really good so yeah happy with it there are actually conferencing rooms there's a dog over there there's and Derek working. <laughs> this is what the co working spot looks like for conferencing. This is where I was talking to Bridge before, and it's great because they have a little air con and a little light here for you, and they have sound barriers, so it's cool. It's a good place to do some conference discussions. And then there's another one over there as well. Okay, so the general consensus of working in Bali as a remote employee. Or just as a remote person I think it's actually quite nice reminds me a lot of like Los Angeles weather but roughly in the 80s it's not as humid the Wi-Fi at this specific co-working location is quite strong so we're all really happy with the Wi-Fi back at the Airbnb it's not as strong fortunately we didn't have great time calling and video timing with people but the Derek and Tiff are actually working it's working out well for them and then for me I'm currently uploading a YouTube video and the Wi-Fi seems to be doing its job. Throughout the course of the next couple of days, what we will do is maybe come to co-working spots and check it out. And so at the moment, it's not too bad. I would highly recommend this place. It's not bad working out of Bali. I understand why there's so many people here. 
who have probably left the 9 to 5 and doing their own thing or they're just here working remotely as a freelancer or consultant. For the most part, I've been mostly doing like content stuff for YouTube as well as for Asian Wonder Woman and then I currently have a call I guess in a couple of, like in an hour actually, with a venture capital firm that I wanted to propose as a community strategist. So I will be talking to them. I'm literally writing up what I would be working on for them specifically, and we'll see how it goes. But so far, it's been a great time in Bali. Unfortunately, I didn't get enough content for Hanoi because I just wasn't feeling that great in Hanoi, but Bali, I will be showing you guys around. So super excited for that. Has a big ass civet. Yeah, here we have like a uh, special animal. Oh, the civet. The civet. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, lua. Lua. Lua or lua. mongoose. Mongoose. Uh, in English. Uh, have you ever seen it anymore? I saw out the statue. <laughs> oh, the statue. Yeah, it's so yeah, cute. This is the real one. Uh, yeah, and uh, actually they are uh, nocturnal animals. Nocturnal? Uh, they more active or, or full active only at the night. Uh, and in the day they more Oh my god, they're so cute. Yeah, but don't so pet. Cute, but, uh, They'll bite. Dangerous, yeah. Oh, very dangerous? Okay. How many more is it aggressive they can bite? Oh, uh, but it's like yeah. open. Like they yeah, don't uh, come down or? No, they never. Oh, wow. never. oh okay. So cute. Uh, the coffee bean uh, from uh, the poop. From yes. his poop. Okay, from so this is a fresh poop. Yes. Mm, my okay. favorite. But after we, this is after we uh -huh. uh, dry. Just after to dry. dry. Yeah, okay. And after that we have to clean it by uh, hot water. Oh, okay. Yeah, by hot water. Maybe around a three until four time until we come like this. Huh? And this is after we clean it and then we have to take off the skin like this. Yeah. Right. We use inside the skin. This is uh, the bean we use to, uh, we make the lua coffee. Yeah, coffee. but uh, before we roast it, the bean, we yeah. have to clean it again by normal water. Oh, yeah, for okay, two, okay. three times, and then we roast it here. Very cool. Yeah. Is it hard to find though? Like, or, do they just like poop there and then you just collect it? Yeah, that's oh, the easiest. Wow. Yeah. They just poop around here and then we yeah. the coffee. Their coffee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Special coffee. <laughs> Very cool. Maybe crazy coffee. <laughs> <laughs> is it very strong? Uh, like this? Yeah, and it's, uh, for me a little bit strong. A little strong. Yeah, but uh, later you can you can you can try it if you want. Oh, yeah, okay. Can, I think we will. Yeah, this is for the next process. After we clean it, we have yeah. to roast it here. Okay. Maybe around forty-five until one hour. Oh, yeah. okay, for one. But only for one gram. Oh, uh, one kilogram. Can you smell it if you want. Can you smell it? Yeah, you can smell it. If you want, you can try. <laughs> smell good. To eat it. Oh, eat it, Derek. Eat it. Yeah, you can. Eat Just it. kidding. I'll eat yeah. it too. Please, you can eat it. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> okay, eat it. One, two, three, on. Hold it, bite it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. You like it? It's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. After that, you must have, you must see a uh, hyper cup, maybe. Yeah. Snail, how do you say it? Yeah, so nice. <laughs> yeah, and also we have a uh, different uh, black coffee here. So the, the first. They've done a really good job commercializing this, though. <laughs> But it's like peaceful and nice and it's not too hot. Oh, I read your recording. This has been on my bucket list for a while. Yeah? yeah? Yay! Well, today we're making it happen. Thank you! Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Whoa! It's like an adult swing. That is actually really close. <laughs> Want to get in this? I this is cute. I want to get in it. Can, I just want to climb into it. <laughs> Are you okay? It's really dark. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah, that's cute. Oh, look at you. Welcome to my crib. <laughs> I'm getting Derek taking photos of Tim. <laughs> oh my god, this is so nice. Zoom in. Climb it, Derek. Climb it. Do you need to zoom out a little more? Uh, no, I think that's fine. Okay. Oh my god, be careful. Do you have insurance? I have insurance. <laughs> by Safety Wing. Sponsored by Safety Wing. Are you? I, well, no. 
But on that note, if you're looking for travel insurance as a nomad, check out SafetyWing. It's fully equipped health insurance made for remote workers and nomads who spend as much time abroad as they please. I currently use it at the moment to travel to make sure I'm fully covered. You can check out the link in the bio below. Just trying to find someone to nest. <laughs> Actually not. Nice. Nomadic nest. <laughs> So over there is the infinity pool, and I believe this is just an area where you can like lounge and hang out. There's like a bunch of people tanning, so unfortunately we're not going there, but we have this incredible view. So nice. So I was telling Derek and Tiff that this is basically an Instagrammer's playground. All of it is kind of just like curated for everyone to take photos, but it's super clean. No mosquitoes, nothing I've remembered from coming in 2018. <laughs> Gandhi was telling us that we need to make wishes here. This is where all the wishes come true. So you must make wishes about love, career, business. It should all happen here. Hey. <laughs> recommended by KJ. It was actually really great. He like drove us around Ubud the whole day. We're getting a coffee in the middle of Ubud and then we're heading back to Seminyak and I'm gonna do my laundry tomorrow and that's one of the most exciting things that is gonna happen this weekend. But so far Bali is so nice. Ubud is so nice. Tiff, are you enjoying your trip so far? Yeah, so nice here. Yeah. So very, very nice. <laughs> Good morning everybody! <laughs> so I decided today was a good time to kind of just sit and chat about my feelings of living and working remotely in Bali. So for context, I've come to Bali a couple times before this too. In fact, when I was younger, I was on a budget, I was living in hostels and I just was not comfortable when I was in Bali the last times I've come. So a lot of it was like fast travel, moving from place to place. And now that I'm older, I'm like, we're doing a lot more slow travel. We're taking our time. We're washing our laundry, which I put my laundry outside because we have pickup service. And then we're, we're all living in an Airbnb with three different rooms. So there's like a big juxtaposition of like how I travel now compared to how I used to travel. And it's kind of funny to kind of watch that unfold. I am still able to travel and live in hostels. I think now I feel like I have an elevated approach or I just have a preference to living a little bit nicer, a little bit more comfortable because I can. Um, but I think my initial thoughts around living in Bali are pretty interesting. So me and my friends, who all of us are from San Francisco, the Bay Area, we noticed that a lot of the digital nomads here are very, uh, they're either from like Australia or from Europe, and we don't really see a lot of, I guess, like Asian Americans like ourselves trying to do the whole like digital nomad exploration kind of thing. And a part of us are like, oh, maybe, you know, the majority of them are actually just like traveling, like traveling, traveling um, as a tourist, or they're at home and they don't go down this unconventional route of becoming a nomad. Um, we went to a co-working spot as well, and it was quite nice. It was like very strong Wi-Fi, and I was like, you know, I could envision myself living and working in Bali, but only for a month tops. It is really beautiful here, but I think I may or may not feel lonely if I didn't have the right community. And granted, that takes some time to build. And I feel like now, because Tiff and Derek are here, I'm not lonely, and I have them as companions and uh, you know, you know, people to talk to during the day or for during dinner. So that's nice. But I think in reality, like if I were to actually move to Bali full time, I would want to have a couple of friends here, or at least friends who are willing to work nomadically with me and just see how things go. But ultimately, like Bali has changed quite a lot, at least from what I remember. We are staying in Seminyak, which is, I believe, 
right underneath Chenggu Beach. It's one of the beaches area. We're living like a little bit more inland, but we're close to like all the shops, all the restaurants and whatnot. But the shops are just lined with like boutique stores and travel agencies and just a lot of like, it's a lot of commercialization. Whereas I feel like before when I went to Bali, it was more historical and cultural and there are a lot more temples. It's more like locals living their life rather than like locals trying to like sell things to you all the time. And so I think that was a little bit shocking for me and a little bit jarring because I was like, wow, I was like, has Bali kind of lost the essence and the magic? Um, I'm not sure. And then even when we went to Ubud as well, everything was pretty streamlined and commercialized when we went uh, coffee tea tasting. So it's not a bad thing. I think it's good for tourism. I think maybe the area needs it, especially after the past two years. I think it was just interesting to kind of see the development happen so fast. And yeah, in a way, it just seemed like everything was so streamlined and, and it was just like done very, very well. So I am happy that the tourism industry is really booming right now um, but again I wonder if Bali will ever stay Bali and you know will it continue to keep its essence and its magic so it's an interesting thought um, but all in all we're here until Tuesday morning a part of me doesn't want to leave because it's so nice being an Asian is just comforting because there's just something about Asia it's just magical as well and I like don't want to let go of this part of my life just yet but next week we are flying to New York. I will be back in the States and then I'll be in New York for a month or so and then back to the Bay Area for a couple months after. And then I think those will be really important months and times to actually think about like where I'm headed next and what I'm building and to actually just like focus a little bit more. I think a lot of the couple past weeks have just been around like resting and I've been resting like really, really well, which is good because I, I actually like needed it. <sighs> yeah, and it's funny, I'm actually wearing my Instagram shirt. Jane, if you're watching this, I'm wearing your Instagram shirt. We traded tech shirts, so she gave me her Instagram shirt, and then I gave her my Stripe shirt, and we both use it as pajamas. <laughs> That's how you do long-distance friendships. <laughs> um, but today we're going to Nook, a cafe, and then um, I'm going to get some work done. I just posted my last vlog living in Singapore. But yeah, so far, I really enjoy Bali. I think next year in 2023, I am gonna be coming back to Bali. I would love to bring some of my friends here as well. Maybe like host a group of 10 of us and we just like do Bali together and work remotely here in Southeast Asia. So that's to come soon. And yeah, I think that's something I'm looking forward to. So we're currently at Nook right now, which is a beautiful brunch spot and with a really great terrace view. Highly recommend for you guys to come visit it, it's so nice. So I just did laundry in Bali, total price is 134,000 rupiah and the total amount was 2.68 kg. So it wasn't too bad because I was able to leave it outside on the doorstep and then someone comes to pick it up, washes it and then basically folds your laundry and then drops it back in front of your house. So um, yeah, just a heads up, you can do laundry just like this. Look how neatly folded it is. <laughs> day in Asia or my last day in Asia before we head out I have a lot of really mixed feelings about it right now I am trying to clean up and pack as much as I can as you can see all my stuff is just laid out here and then the great thing too is because I'm going to New York I want to lessen my load and I asked uh, Putu who is the guy managing our Airbnb so I'm gonna leave a few clothes here and there just so that I can donate it and he said that he'll actually take it from me and then donate it to anyone who needs it around the area so um, I think this is like a common thing that's done in Bali in general so if you are traveling in Bali and you have things that you want to get rid of or like just donate you can ask people and they will happily donate it for you so um, I did that last time when I was here on a meditation retreat and I'm doing 
away again. So, yeah. It feels weird that I'm heading back to the States. I do think I will have reverse culture shock, but you know, it's been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming to go back to the States, first in New York and then California. So I will be documenting how I'm gonna be working there, the people that I meet there, and just get some vlogs in as well. But yeah, it's a new chapter for me. This is me leaving Asia, and I won't be back in Asia until next year. So here goes life.